and welcome to the Pantheon, where it's Spooktober and all the horrible beasts are currently residing in my hat. Hmm, a bit weird. But thank you for joining me, and let's have a look at some terrifying creatures. And what is more terrifying than a human noble? Lenore, Autumn Sovereign. Four mana for a zero four. Coven, at the beginning of combat on your turn, Put a 1-1 counter on up to one target creature you control. Then, if you control three creatures, uh, three or more creatures with different powers, draw a card. So, a nice bit of card advantage, nice bit of 1-1 one, one counter action, and we've got a big 0-4 in the command zone. Not that big of a threat, let's be honest, but you can generate a nice bit of advantage, which I really quite like. And, you know, the artwork on this card is superb. Everyone loves a nice bit of artwork, don't they? So... Now, without further ado, why don't you subscribe to my channel before we go any further. I'm going to do one of these videos for every single legendary creature ever printed, and this is just one stop on that merry-go-round. So, come and join me for all of them, or get off. Go on a different ride. I don't know, this metaphor's falling to pieces. But anyway, let's have a look at my top five. And in at number five, well, this card, you know, as Commander, is all about generating advantage. And they've just recently printed one of the best card advantage cards in green I've seen in a long, long time. It's Augur of Autumn. This card is phenomenal. Three mana, human druid. You may look at the top card of your library any time. You may play lands from the top of your library. So if you're playing those lands, it's essentially like you're drawing a card because you're not using cards in your hand and you're digging deeper into the deck. However, Coven, as long as you control three or more creatures with different powers, you may cast creature spells from the top of your library as well so you can just dig through your drawing creatures every time you cast one off the top amazing amazing card this card is phenomenal and it's a two three so it helps with coven with our commander you know our commander zero zero this can easily grow and you know the cool thing about this commander is that that one one counter you can move it about you can really really manipulate the power of all of our creatures so this card and these cards are all about card advantage Wall of Morning is another card. Two mana for a zero for Defender with Wall. It's one oh, it's a Wall with Defender, or the way around. And when it ends the battlefield, exile top card of your library for each uh, face down for each opponent you have. So putting all these cards to the side, and then if we have Coven at the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more creatures with different powers, put a card exile with Wall of Morning into its owner's hand. So with our commander, yes, our commander is a zero four, but same as this, but it can put the one one counter on itself, make our commander a one five, and then we just need another creature of a different size, like Augur of Autumn, and then we're going to be generating tons of card advantage. And if you go down sort of a flicker route, you could possibly flicker this, get more cards into exile. Ooh, so much advantage. Then these next two cards, well, our opponents, you know, generally they're not going to really like our permanents and they won't want to destroy them, maybe destroy target creature, things like that. And these cards are amazing for that sort of situation. Face Deed, four mana for a four for Elk. When it attacks, another target attacking creature you control gains indestructible at the end of the turn. So that could be good if we're sort of building around our commander or want to keep something alive when it's in combat. And whenever a creature or planeswalker you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. It's a may. Do not miss the trigger. You want to draw those cards. So this is fantastic. And this is the sort of effect you want in, you know, if you're generating a lot of advantage. Then there's Battle Mammoth. Five mana for a six five. So six power, you know, quite an individual sort of uh, power and toughness to make sure we enable Coven. With Trample, and whenever opponent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. And you can foretell it for four mana. So you play it face down and it's just non-existent it's in exile and then you can flip it back up as a trap card for four mana and it's a big elephant what couldn't be nice about that then let's move on to my number four pick and at number four well we've got tristani summoner seven mana for a one one Ooh, nice but this is all about getting all of that coven action on the board this card generates so many different tokens. It creates a 2-2 white knight creature token with visions, a 3-3 green centaur creature token, and a 4-4 green rhino creature token with trample on the battlefield. For, yeah, it's okay, it's seven mana. But 
I was speaking about flickering earlier. This is a creature, so we could flicker this, get that effect again. And it's four different powers and toughness, so Coven will always be online, even if they destroy the Rhino or something like that. I'll bounce that back to your hand. This is an amazing, amazing card and just generates so much value. So similarly, there's Bestial Menace. Five mana for a sorcery, put a 1-1 one, one green snake, a 2-2 two, two green wolf, and a 3-3 three, three green elephant creature onto the battlefield. Let's just build this as elephant tribal, you know, just anything with an elephant in the art or, you know, creature type. Yeah, I'm down for that. And then we can just have some woman with candles pointing around going, oh, get, you get a counter, we draw a card. I don't know how that makes, you know, sense, but we can do it. Then Ooze, Myotic Slime. Five mana, four, four, so four, four, okay, pretty decent. But when it dies, create two, two, twos with when this dies, create two one ones. So, you know, you can sacrifice these, just block, chump, whatever you want to do, and it'll just slowly spread out so you get lots of different sized tokens. And since we've got all these tokens, why don't we give them death touch with Somberwald Beastmaster, who's a seven mana one one, very similar to Tristani's Summoner, Human Ranger, and when it ends the battlefield, create a two two green wolf, a three three beast, and a four four green beast. Hmm, bit weird. Two different types of beast. Mmm, delicious flavors of beast. But this also gives creature tokens you control. Death Touch. So another great card to flicker. The other one, Tristani Summoner, gives them all sort of like different keywords. So the Rhino has trample and stuff like that. These are just generic tokens, but they do all have Death Touch. So that's pretty goddamn good. And then if we're playing a lot of token makers, we want to play things like Doubling Season. Five mana for an enchantment effect will create one or more tokens under your control. It creates twice that many of those tokens instead. If an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control, it puts twice that many of those counters on a permanent instead. And that is really key for a couple of cards that are gonna come up. We're going to really delve into the counters because our commander puts a one-one counter. So with this, oh, it puts two one-one counters on something. By God, somebody stop this. But if we're going down the token route, these sort of cards are phenomenal. Anointed Procession, four mana enchantment if a token will be created uh, if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. So Tristani Summoner, you know, it's a seven mana one one, but it's some are two 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 twos, two three threes, two four fours. That's an absolutely massive board state, and it'll probably win you the game if you can attack with it. You know, just saying. But then there's Primal Vigor, which you know I, I I'm not a fan of this uh, to be honest because it helps our opponents, but. It's a great effect and it builds really well into this deck. Five mana enchantment if one or more tokens will be put onto the battlefield. Twice that many of those tokens are put onto the battlefield instead. That does include your opponent. And if one or more 1-1 one -one counters will be placed on a creature, instead twice that many 1-1 one -one counters are placed on that creature. So there we go. Nice, uh, nice picture of an elephant. There you go. The elephant tribal deck is still alive. Which brings me on to number three. And at number three, we've got ways of removing counters because our commander can put counters on things so i want to take advantage of that and remove them and spike tiller is a wonderful example of a card like that five mana for a zero zero but it comes in with three one ones on it pay two and remove one one counter put a one one counter on target creature so you can just move those counters about but the really cool thing pay two remove a one one counter from it target land becomes a two two creature that's still a land Put a 1-1 counter on it. So we can make lands into 3-3s. Three now, that's pretty good, I must admit. But the coolest thing about this is, say you've got all your mana open and your opponents, they're looking at all your Tristani beast collar tokens or whatever, and they're going, oh, I don't like what's going on over there. They cast a board wipe. The Wrath of God. Well, you activate this on all of their lands. Turn all their lands into 3-3s, three and then they destroy all their own lands. Not a great way to make friends, but it's a cool thing that you can do, and you can really threaten people with that. That's the cool thing about EDH. You can say, okay, if you want to board wipe, that's fine, but you won't have any islands left. Are you sure you want to do this? And they go, no, I don't want to do it. I'm sorry, I concede the game. You're the best player. I wish they'd say that, but they don't really. Another cool way of uh, taking counts off is Spike Weaver. Four mana, zero, zero, it comes to play with three counters. Pay two, remove a counter to move a counter. Then pay one, remove a counter. Creatures deal no combat damage this turn. So with our commander on the field, 
we can just put the counter on this. So every turn we're going to have at least one fog available. As long as we don't remove all the counters and this dies to itself. But this is a great, great card. And, you know, it can really lock out people. You know, mono red decks, they tend to like attacking. So does Boros. Well, make them miserable with a spike. Then we've got first lid, three mana for a zero, zero. And then it's the battlefield with two one one counters on it. Pay two, remove one one counter on it. Target players search their library for a basic land, puts it on the battlefield taps, then shuffles their library. So each turn we can coven onto this, put a counter on it, and then remove it to get a land every single turn, which is a nice bit of advantage. Then we've got walking ballista, a double X, zero, zero. And it's battlefield with X one one counters on it. So it can be any size that you want it to be. So you're missing a... 12, 12, well, just pay 24 mana. And if, I know it's not that easy, but you can do that. And you can pay four to put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Remove a 1-1 one, one counter from it, deals one damage to any target. This could potentially set up lethal, you know, if you manage to give it lifelink with, you know, um, Heliod or something like that, and then you can just ping everyone to death. Then Steel Bane Hydra, another great Hydra, you know, setting the sort of size of it. Double green and X for a zero, zero. When it ends the battlefield, X counters on it. Pay three, remove all one counters, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Really, really nice. Just being able to control the board, enchantments and artifacts are a big issue. You know, you should always have removal in your deck for them. And this creature plays so well with our commander. And it's a turtle. It's a turtle. Not quite an elephant, but it's a turtle. Then we've got Catty Bree of Mithril Hall. Two mana for a 2-2 two, two with first strike and reach. Hmm, pretty good to be fair. And when it attacks, put a 1-1 one, one counter for each equipment attached to it. So I don't think that is really going to be that useful unless you want to go down the Voltron direction with this deck. You know, a 4 mana 0 for classic Voltron material. And you could pay one to remove all 1-1 one, one counters for Catty Bree. It deals X damage to target attacking or blocking creature and opponent controls. Where X is the number of counters removed this way. So that could potentially sort of play around with your opponent's combat step, you know. <laughs> it's not that great, but you could do it. Then we've got Realm Seekers. Six mana, zero, zero, L Scout. Ends the battlefield with X, 1-1 one, one counters on it. Where X is the total number of cards in all players' hands. So it's generally going to be pretty massive there's four players if they all have four cards well it's a 16 16 pretty good then you can pay three and remove a counter from it search your library for a land card reveal it put it into your hand and then shuffle your library that's any land so if you you know own a Gaia's cradle you can get a Gaia's cradle out with this or something similar you just get whatever you want basic forest that's my personal preference which brings me on to number two and at number two we've got prime evil protector and all of these cards are about reducing the cost and getting interesting power and toughness onto the field so this is an avatar that costs one less to cast for each creature your opponents control now as i just said you know our opponents tend to play the game of magic against us sadly and they're going to have a number of different power uh, creatures on the field so this could potentially be one green for a 10 10 and when it ends the battlefield put a one one count on each other creature you control so Playing into that 1-1 one, one counter sort of synergy style of deck, this card, ooh, it's going to enable Coven. And it just works brilliantly in the deck. Then there's Ancient Stone Idol, 10 mana, 12-12, with Flash. That was me flashing my kilt. This spell costs one less to cast for each attacking creature. So, you know, if our opponents are getting a bit jiggy with it, you can flash this in for like two, three mana, and then you've got a 12-12, which will definitely enable Coven. And it's got Trample, and when it dies, create a 6-12 Colorless Construct as for creature, creature token with Trample. So, I don't know why it's a 6-12. That seems odd to me. Why not I, I, Why not a 6-6? Because then it's like, like half the power. It's like crumbling down or something. I don't quite understand why it's still got a big booty. But this card, it's sticky. You can always have sort of a creature on the field, and it's massive. Then there's Impervious Great Worm. 10 mana for a 16-16. Woo! That's what I'm talking about with Convoke. So our creatures can help cast this spell. Each creature you tap while casting spell costs one or uh, one generic or a mana of that creature's colour. And it's got Indestructible, so it's, again, a nice sticky creature that'll just stay around. And Convoke is wonderful. It gets around Summoning Sickness as well, so as soon as a creature comes in, you can Convoke it even if it doesn't have haste. Then, very similarly, we've got Otokathon? 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 
I have no idea what that word is. Worm. <laughs> it's a 15 mana 914 with Convoke again and Trample. They're a really, really cool card. If you're going to sort of down the token route and, you know, this deck does play well with tokens, getting a lot of different size creatures and stuff like that. This spell is very easy to cast. Then another great card here. I love this card and it's got a very, very juicy 10-8 stat. It is a five mana Grotharma, all devouring. So we'll... Oh. <laughs> Just, sw just swallowed my tongue. Other creatures have, when this creature attacks, you may have it fight Grothama all devouring. That's not just us, that's everyone. And when it leaves the battlefield, each player draws cards equal to the amount of damage dealt to Grothama this turn by sources they control. So the idea is, here is we swing out with our tokens, have them all fight Grothama, Grothama dies, we draw 10 cards. But other than that, it's just a 10-8 chilling on the field so we can coven all the days long. Then... <laughs> garbage card but it's a 9-8 for 4 mana eater of days it's flying and trample and when it comes into play you skip your next 2 turns I never want to take my turns anyway but if you're playing sort of like a hate bear style of deck there are a couple of things that stop uh, end of the battlefield effects from happening so you could potentially play this and then you just have a big 9-8 trampling flyer I actually played this in a um, what was that set uh there was a, the the one with 1600 cards in it uh mystery booster i actually played this in mystery booster cast it on turn four my opponent took their extra turn took the next extra turn took their next extra turn and passed it to me and i just killed them with a 9-8 flyer it felt incredible they didn't remove it so potentially although you know you've got three opponents to deal with in commander but this card could just get there then Dust Elemental, 4 mana for a 6-6. Six, six. Cool stat line. It's got Flash, Flying, and Fear. <laughs> flying and Fear. I'm scared of flying myself. I don't like airplanes. Then when it comes into play, return three creatures you control to the owner's hand. So I was thinking about the Blink sort of strategy. Tristani's Summoner could be something that you bounce without replay the Tristani Summoner. Really, really cool card. Which brings me on to my number one. And I've touched on it sort of a bit previously, but having the ability to choose the size of your creatures with something like Coven is essential. So this is all about Hydras and, you know, manipulating the size of them. And Ren's Run Hydra, which is a brand new uncommon, is just such a cool version of this card. One green and X for a Hydra. It's got Reach, the 0-0, zero, zero, and it's the battlefield with X, 1-1 one, one counters on it. So it can be whatever size you want it to be. It can be absolutely massive. It stops flyers. But the cool thing, and one of my favorite things in all of Magic, is having modes on cards. It has Reinforce X. So double green and X, discard this card. <laughs> oh, it's just like cycling, isn't it? Then put X 1-1 one, one counters on target creature. So, you know, we can swing in with one of our 1-1s, one, pump it massively with this at instant speed, because this is at instant speed, and get in for lethal, or use it on our commander, this card is just so flexible, I love it. It's exactly what I love to see out of a commander. Well, a commander card. Then Micaeus the Lunak is another great example of this sort of effect. It's got different modes to it. One white and X for zero, zero. Ends the battlefield with X one one counters on it. You can tap it to put a one one counter on himself, so he just grows himself as well as maybe our commander putting counts on it. Or you can remove a one one counter, put a one one counter on each other creature you control. So. If we've really spread out with all of our tokens, that ability is phenomenal. It just works so, so well. I, I love it. McCase, great little include. Then we've got Hooded Hydra, double green and X for a Snake Hydra. <laughs> Wish it was an Elephant Hydra, but you can't get everything in life. Zero, zero. When it dies, create a 1-1 one, one green Snake Creature token for each 1-1 one, one counter on it. A Morph for 5 mana. So Morph, you put it face down as a 2-2. Two, two on the field, and then you can unmorph it at any point you want. Then when it's turned faced up, put five one one counters on it. So this just generates so much value. We can have a massive creature, sacrifice it. We've got a massive board state, tap Micaeus, put counts on them all. There's just so many cool things you can do with this card. And finally, we've got Genesis Hydra, double green and X zero zero. When you cast a spell, reveal, oh, this is a plant by the way. Where are my elephant Hydras, man, you know? Anyway, reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put a non-line permanent card with converting mana cost X or last for a moment onto the battlefield, then shuffle the rest into your library. So digs deep, 
gets to a coven, you know, we get a unique power and toughness, and it gets us another permanent as well. There's just so much play to this card, and it's just great all-around value. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. These are my top five cards, and you know, quite a cool commander. Always love a bit of card advantage. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please do like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you soon. Bye.